This is a takeover. Wall Street and the ASX now at our fingertips with this right here. Welcome to Eagle Review, courtesy of Stake. Get trading today at hellostake.com or download their app from the App Store. The final game of Round 19 was covered in sunshine. Just an unreal result after the monsoonal rains earlier on the weekend. Hardly a sunny start, though. Saints by 12 early doors. Some exceptional forward pressure here leads to this Butler brilliance. He's breaking tackles, nails one on the left, had a career-high five snags, so didn't enjoy seeing the pill in his hands much. Waterman, though, responds, just launching himself into the pack and just keeps his mitts on it. Nominated for Mark of the Week seven days ago, so I'd love seeing more of it. Then a stoppage in the Eagles' forward half. The ball piffs off of Kelly. Jai Cully says cheers onto the boot and Lux of Fortune. Joshy Rotham, first time playing up forward for this great club, surely ever. Was it a mark? Umpire says, yeah, we'll give it to him. He rocks back and makes it count. 44 games in, and he finally registers the six big ones. Teammates flock from all angles. Even see some defenders in there, so props for their commitment. Then, hey, look at this. Back-to-back opening quarter wins. Definitely the first time that's happened all season. But then King emerges. Barris all over him early doors. But he gets his chance with his second disposal of the game. Pick up, snap. Simo comes into the box like, hey, what did I miss? He hasn't even sat down yet. So super flattening for him. Saints with a dream start to the term. But then check out this play. Bailey Williams with the strong tackle. The ball releases. Luke Foley. He's got his shoelace hung on to. Doesn't matter. Cully over the top. Josh Rotham streaming inside the 50 delivers lace out to JK but then Jimmy Webster with the body blow bang umpires all over it and Josh Rotham lining up for goal number two now and drills it the reaction was one of just pure elation later in the term Cully with one of the more unique goal assists hoiks it over his head and one of his team high five score involvements for the Eags Liam Ryan does well taking it over the shoulder and finishes truly but it would be the last time the Eagles would hit the lead. Next, King getting involved again. Good things happen when he does. Leaves Bunger behind in this marking contest. Pretty good effort. Gives to Butler. On to Higgins. Just too good. Saints steal a couple of goals at the death of the first half, including one on the siren from the Butler. 16 points at the main change. The third quarter was one of West Coast dominance, though. JD snags back-to-back goals, but 20 inside 50s for just a couple of majors. Compared to the opponents, one just wasn't making the most of their opportunities. Saints almost with the opener for the last quarter, but Hoff, marvellous goalkeeper save. Keeps the six points out, but it just delays the inevitable. Halfway through the last quarter, King wrestling with Barris, the former keeps his feet, and the Saints begin marching to the finish line. A bittersweet ending, though, was second game of Jai Cully. A great story coming over in the mid-season draft. Almost does his calf grabbing this one, hopefully just a bit of cramp. Rothy had a plus one for his first goal kickers club invite, and Jai puts it through. Celebrates accordingly, but the visitors too good on the day. They sunk five of the last six goals, running away 28-point winners. Jack Steele had it 40 times. An absolute ton of it. He helps keep his side in the hunt for the top eight. And for our boys, another spirited effort in front of 35,000 home fans, but ultimately falling short. Let's have a listen to Simo. Glass half full, almost, with you know some of the things we're doing. I think since the bye, we've been a lot more consistent, but we haven't had quite the reward. Now, obviously, the Essendon game was, but yeah, a few quarters are letting us down, and the numbers suggested they should have been further in front. So, the second half we thought was better than the first half. You know, I thought some of our senior players were down, particularly the first half with our mids, and um, some of our younger players help carry the load so that's definitely positive. I thought a lot of our young guys have taken a step forward. We're going to keep giving those guys chances. I mean they've got to earn their spot and hold their spot but you know we know where they're at too so the levels of performance might be a bit different for a younger player so today was another step forward from last week. It was the Saints' first win over the Eagles since 2010. Have a look at some of this vision. we got Ben McKinlay doing his best with four majors. Adam Selwood with a career day. 32 disposals and a couple of goals. Matty Prittis, 34, but no one going with him. Saints by 35. These contests have been pretty tight of late. The average margin across the last seven games between these two sides has been 14 points. On the weekend, though, it was mainly scores from stoppages where the Saints did their damage, despite winning just one more clearance. The visitors 
Panthers outscored the Eagles 46 to 38 from this source. And it's not often you see Luke Shuey and Tim Kelly combined with five touches and three clearances to half time. Between them, a very quiet day for the prolific ball winner in Kelly. Just four touches for the match, a new career low for the 99 gamer. He was well minded by youngster Win Hager, who also found a bit of the footy himself. Kelly even had stints at half four, just trying to break up the tag at stages during the game. The Saints were looking for Max King all night long. And why wouldn't you? Absolute gun. But Barris, he defended him stoutly. He did it all and again led his team for disposals. 26 with 13 contested, 10 intercepting and another 8 grabs. He was so good, will absolutely let this slip on the ground go. The big fella hitting the deck right about where the goalkeeper's box was for the Saturday night soccer fixture. Simo spoke some great words about one of the favourites of the John Worsfold medal post-game. Let's have a listen. He might not be in contention for it, but he's an All-Australian standard at the moment, Tom Barras, the way he's... At half time we had, what, 32 inside 50s against? So not many fullbacks get to compete with that number and do a pretty good job. So I don't know who won the battle, but I feel like Tom's almost been our best player every week for the last six weeks. So he's really stood up with his leadership. He's bought in on everything we're doing. So I'm really proud of his, his season so far. My man! More milestones for JK, this time sharing equal fourth with his former skipper and good mate Darren Glass for games played at the footy club. 270 and not too many bad ones amongst them either. He kicked a couple on Sunday and now moves six clear of JD for the leading goal kicker award in 2022. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. It's looking like all clear for the boys, touch wood. Shuey did cop a couple of hits out there, but tough as nails played through it all. On the other side of the fence, Jack Billings was done after four minutes. A back disc issue, apparently. Doesn't sound ideal for the great man, and they did well to cover him for the afternoon. I'm going to keep my eye on him. Bit of a change with how Josh Rotham was used on the weekend, backing up big Bailey Williams in the ruck. We've seen it down at waffle level the last few weeks. Had a ripping game against Subi's Delahunty a few weeks back. He had 21 disposals, 20 hitouts, and set up a fair few snags. Had an absolute cracker. Did some rucking back in his Colts days for West Perth in 2016. And at the AFL level, 14 disposals, 7 grabs, 2 inside 50s, and of course a couple of majors. Great work from his development coaches to have him thriving in his new role. <laughs> <laughs> Barris and King, a real slobber knocker of a duel. How's this moment though? The umpire just couldn't split them in the marking contest. Not a bad call in the end, probably. Sinclair slamming one into his teammate. That's good stuff. Sharman almost the mark of the year. Even got the little lift from Darling, but no dice. Speaking of Jack, he's almost killed a man. Rowan Marshall doesn't know how close he got to just being in a world of hurt. JD is just heaving himself into that contest. Harry Edwards wearing a footy to the side of the scone. Rocked back like it copped him with some force. Let's hope he's all right. Go around the grounds, the cats and power. Finlayson just booting one into a teammate, Amon. We'll obviously allow that, but what's going on with the Cats fan bringing his best mate from home? Not sure about this one. This does not look like the face of someone that's happy to be at the footy. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Eagle Review. And remember, if you transfer your portfolio over a thousand bucks to stake, they'll give you zero dollar ASX trades for the year. That's literally unbeatable. Visit hellostake.com or download their app today. This is a takeover. Wall Street and the ASX now at our fingertips with this right here. 